We are now to tackle the increase in net migration into the United Kingdom. The UK government have put in place certain measures that cut across different visa categories, such as the skilled worker visa, student visa, health and care visa, and many other visa categories. And basically, these measures are targeted to reduce the number of net migration into the United Kingdom. And you know, a study was carried out at Oxford University by the Migration Observatory and they decided to analyze the um, the stay rates of people in different categories in the UK. And the prediction is that this measure is put in place is expected to increase the number of people leaving the UK from between now and 2025. So the other idea is to reduce net migration, reduce the number of immigrants coming into the UK. And this was after you know the Prime Minister mentioned on national TV that the number of immigration is increasing and the plan is to reduce it as soon as schemes possible. Schemes to encourage workers and students to Britain. Numbers are too high. It's as simple as that. And I want to bring them down. So that's why in this video, I'm going to share with you some of the measures that have been put in place by the government in the last couple of months and how some of those measures can affect those who are planning to come into the UK from 2024 and also for those of us who are already in the UK on a pre-settlement visa category, how it's also going to affect us. So you can get yourself informed and, you know, make a better plan and, you know, decisions for yourself and your family. So if this is like something you like to see, don't go anywhere, keep watching to the end. And if you haven't clicked on the subscribe button, please hit the subscribe button to join the amazing growing family. And my returning subscribers, you guys are amazing. Thank you for being here. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. The issue of net migration in the UK has been on for over a decade, even starting from the time when David Cameron was the Prime Minister here in the United Kingdom. They've always had a lot of concerns as we got the number of net migration in the United Kingdom. Successive Tory Prime Ministers have promised to reduce net migration. Net migration to this country will be in the order of tens of thousands each year. David Cameron's promise was explicit and year after year it was broken. His successor repeated it. In the tens of thousands. The pledge broken again. We will sort out our immigration system. Boris Johnson gave a manifesto promise to bring net migration down. But after the Covid lockdown, numbers shot back up. My commitment is to bring numbers down. A lot of the surge is down to government stamped work and student visas. And which nationalities are coming here has changed beyond recognition. The European Union for years fed a huge part of the influx, but fell rapidly and is now net negative. The big growth is from non-EU countries, with takers for UK work visas now led by India, Nigeria and Zimbabwe. Many get visas for dependents too. This increase in net migration actually happened because the UK um, you know, could not fill in so many job vacancies and they had to rely on oversee workers you know to come into the uk fill in those job vacancies and you know help grow the economy which is one of the reasons why people kept coming to the uk you know to fill in some of those vacancies now the issue of net migration wasn't as high as it is now uh, before brexit because uh, many of the people in the uk at that time were people from the european union countries and you know these people were able to help the uk manage some of the shortage you know um, in different industries and after Brexit, uh, many of the people from the EU decided to leave the country and go back to their own country because some of the benefits they were enjoying when UK was in the EU, um, they were not enjoying it anymore. So some of them had to leave. And this now creates a very huge gap in you know, um, the workforce here in the UK. So the UK had to open up and after Brexit, COVID-19 came and the UK government had to open their border once again for, you know, foreign workers, for students, just to, you know, boost the economy, um, you know, of the UK. And, you know, this leads to an increase in the um, net migration into the country. And now that the net migration has, you know, hit the roof, um, we had over 606,000 people that came into the UK last year, 2022. And, you know, this has really, you know, raised a lot of concerns because of the resources available in the UK, coupled with the number of people coming in, it was not, you know, um, uh, it was too high. So it's really affecting the UK government in so many ways. Now, the question now is, what are the things that the UK government is putting into play? There are different measures that have been put into play. Uh, one of the measures, basically, is that um, students 
uh, word coming from January 2024 are no longer allowed to bring in their dependents into the UK. And you know, based on the um, study carried out by the um, Migration um, Observatory at the Oxford University, the study is that they decided to do an analysis and said, okay, let's check, do an analysis, let's examine the, um, the state um, rates of people in different visa categories. Or those on student visa, what are the percentage of people that eventually stay back in the country um, after their studies? And they did that for every other visa category and they analyzed this based on, you know, um, the different measures that the UK government is putting into play, which we're going to talk about shortly. Now, and they came up, uh, up with the conclusion that between now and 2024, there's going to be an increase in the number of immigrants in the United Kingdom leaving and going back to their countries. And it really makes sense because if you look at the measures, it's really targeted to reduce um, the number of migrants in the UK. Now, let me give you an example. Now, for the student visa category um, that has you know, stop people from bringing in independence. Imagine having a family back in your own country, and you know, for those who have been in the UK, they can attest to the fact that completing your program is really difficult. Probably one out of five students eventually get a permanent job in the UK. Now, the UK government decided that from January 2024, um, students can no longer bring in their dependents. Now, if you're a student and you've got family back home after your studies and you're able to get a good job, there's 90% chances of you going back to your family in your in your own country. So that's really one of the things that is being put into play. So you're going to come into the UK, spend 10,000 or you know over 20,000 of pounds to study, and you have to go back to your own country because it gets very difficult to get a job in the United Kingdom, a shallow professional job in the UK. So that's one of the measures that was put in place. And there's been a lot of conversation around um, people on the health and care visa not being able to bring in their dependent also. Now, many people, many international students in the UK who aren't able to get a professional job end up switching to the health and care visa. Now, imagine not being able to bring in your, your family while on a student visa, then when you switch to it, uh, 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 the health and care visa also, although this is still a proposed measure, it's not been passed into law yet. Now, when you switch to the health and care visa, you're also not allowed to bring your dependents for five years. So that's practically living in the UK for seven to eight years without your family, which many people might not be able to survive. So most people might virtually have to go back to their own country. Now, another measure that has recently put into place and, you know, expected to be, um, to be effective 16th of January 2024 is that uh, people applying for the skilled worker visa are required to pay more IHS fee compared to what is currently applicable. So imagine if you probably finish your master's program with your family, for those who are able to probably bring in their family at the moment, who are currently in the UK with their family on student visa, and um, next year you are planning, you are able to get a good job, a skilled worker um, job, which your employer, because most employers in the UK expect you, what they do is to help you get a COS, you are expected to sort out your visa application and the expenses that comes with it. Now, imagine um, having a family of four and your employer gave you a five years visa. Remember, you were a student before you got the visa, meaning that you were restricted to 20 hours work. So it means you can't make as much money as you should because you're a student who is restricted to 20 hours. Now, after you finish your master's program, and you're able to get a skilled worker visa job that gave you five years visa, how do you expect a student who just finished up paying up a tuition fee to raise 18,000 pounds to fund himself, his family of four, and you know, get to pay all of this money? Now, mind you, the 18,000 pounds is only for the IHS fee. That does not include the visa application fee in itself. So it gets more expensive to switch visa in the UK. And based on the study, the plan is to make sure people want a student visa, even when you get a job, and you can't afford to pay for your visa application, you eventually have to go back to your own country. Because the same is applicable for the um, post-study work visa. If you apply for the post-study work visa, you probably, for your family or for, you probably spend about eight to 9,000 pounds on the visa application. So it gets more expensive. So people that are even able to bring in their family and you know they might eventually have to go back to their own country because they can't afford to pay the increased you know um, fee of the IHS and the visa fee in itself. So yeah, it really gets really um, you know difficult. But however, the point is the essence of this video is also to keep people informed so that when you're on your student visa and you've got 
um, plan to switch a skilled worker visa make sure you know that you need financial commitment to remain in the uk and if you can't meet up with those financial you know requirements you have to go back to your home country which is a plan between now and 2025 to increase the number of people living in the united kingdom so this is just to keep you guys informed on what is you know being put into play and make sure you make adequate plans so you don't get stuck along the way so if you have any thoughts around this please state in the comment section if you're coming across this video for the first time or you are seeing my channel for the first time please hit the like button and also hit the subscribe button to join the amazing growing family and my channel subscribers thank you guys for being here i really do appreciate you guys so this will be the end of this video and i'll see you guys in my next video thank you